Hey guys! This video is going to be a bit longer than usual, so grab a hot beverage or whatever you feel like and let's get started. In this video, we're going to be making a couple of bakery shop inspired items. So we're going to be making an old fashioned country style bakery counter. We're going to be making a couple of shelves and we're also going to be making the blackboard in the background. This was meant to be a bonus video for this past week, but life happens. And so instead I'm going to be posting two videos this week. I started off with a sketch to get an idea of the design I wanted. And the only two measurements I used throughout the process of making this counter was the height and the depth. To me, the height is the most important measurement for a counter because it has to be comfortable to stand at. The depth and the length can vary a lot depending on the purpose of the counter and the style it's in. So if you are going to make one, definitely play around and just make it in the size and style you want. I wanted my counter to have some carved details on the front, so for that I just first took a scrap piece of wood. I believe this is basswood that is 4 or 6 millimeters thick. The thickness doesn't really matter too much though, and this piece is not even as tall as I needed it for the counter, but you'll see why that also doesn't matter later in the video. The only thing that's really important for this specific piece of wood is that it's thick enough to carve, and as long as you want the length of the counter. I first used a mechanical pencil to just sketch out the design I wanted and I then just used my X-Acto knife to carve the design. I usually do use a different knife for carving wood, one that I got in a hardware store, but it broke, or at least the handle broke, so I can't really use it, and so until I get a new one, this is the only thing I have. If you wanted to, you could do most of or maybe even all of the carving using an electric file or drill. The reason why I'm doing this by hand is because I like how crisp the lines get and sometimes it can be difficult to achieve such fine detail and such fine sharp lines using the electric file. However, you'll see that I actually did use the electric file to create the outer portion of the pattern just to get a softer edge. And once I was done, I went over it with what is technically a nail file, just again to soften it and smooth it out. Another option if you don't want to carve the design but still want some detail in the front would be to just paint a design instead, which in my opinion would look just as cool. Or of course you could just leave it blank, which if you paint it and leave the grain showing through the paint, so use kind of like a transparent or watered down paint, it would again just create a really cool effect. Next, I started working on the trim that goes along the bottom of the counter, so I took a similar piece of wood and used my wood shaper, I think it's called. Let me know if there's a better word for it in English. I'm going to put the name of the product in an annotation or something like that. 
Basically, you can use it to create borders and you can buy these finished from miniature shops if you don't want to make them yourself or any shop that sells supplies for model building. I only just recently bought this machine because I wanted to be able to make custom ones. Once I'd done that, I used my scroll saw to cut that into a couple of pieces which were as tall as I needed them and the reason why I cut two pieces was so that I could stack them because the one piece on its own or the one layer was not thick enough to match my design. I then just glued those onto the front piece and this is why it's not important that the first piece of wood I made is tall enough to actually match the height of the counter. I added a couple of skinny sticks just for some decoration. And I then started working on the two posts that go on the side of the front and also holds up the countertop. I mean, they don't technically support anything, but I guess if it was a real counter, they would help support the tabletop. Anyway, for these I used my lathe and I'm going to put the product name or the name of the tool somewhere on the screen. If you don't have a lathe, you can use a wooden dowel and just carve some using a knife. And if you don't want to make them yourself, you can buy pre-made ones in any shop that sells miniature supplies. The pencil I used in the beginning was just to mark off the length of each piece. And I then made the dowel a bit thinner before marking off the actual design. The wooden dowel I'm using is from a hardware store and I got it such a long time ago that I don't remember what type of wood it is. But it's definitely either basswood or beech or maybe even oak. In general, it doesn't really matter what type of wood you use, although I don't really recommend using balsa wood and there's some other wood that is very similar because those are super fragile. I know those types of wood are very easy to work with, cut into and stuff like that, but the product itself or the result you're going to get from it is not going to be as durable, so I don't really think it's worth it. I'm not sure if this is something you'd be interested in, but I was thinking about making a couple of basics videos on the materials and tools I use for working with wood and metal. Obviously I do show the tools and materials I use in the tutorials, but I figured it would be nice to have kind of like a go-to video you could watch if you needed questions answered about that sort of things. And it would also be a chance for me to show these, I guess, more interesting tools such as the lathe and the wood shaper a bit more close up. Something else I'd like your opinion on is if you'd like me to make more videos similar to this one in the sense that it is a bit longer and it does include a couple of pieces of furniture or accessories. And the reason why I did this in the first place is because I don't post non-food tutorials that often on this channel and so I figured that when I do I might be able to at least in some of the videos include more items. Once I'd finished the two posts, I needed them to match up with the curve on the trim or border I made previously. And so for that, I just used the electric file and rounded off the bottom and then glued them on top of the border. Next, we can begin working on the sides of the counter and for this, I just traced the shape that the front of the counter has and then sketched out the depth I wanted it to have. I then used that to create a stencil, which I traced onto a two millimeter thin or thick sheet of wood, used my scroll saw to cut them out and then glued them onto the sides. And I then cut and glued on a piece of mahogany for the tabletop. If you want to, you can just call it a day and use the counter as is. In most cases, you're not going to see the back anyway, but I chose to add some shelving. And once again, I didn't use any specific measurements for this. I just used the space inside the back of the counter and a measuring tape to figure out how big I needed the pieces to be. Once I was done, I added some wood filler to any crevices. 
just to smooth everything out and once that was dry I used some fine sandpaper to sand it. I also used this to cover up the lines on the front from where the side pieces were glued on to the first piece. Because I wanted it to look like the base of the counter was made from some dark wood as well as a tabletop, I just painted it using some dark brown acrylic paint. And after doing that, I mixed up some blue acrylic paint and painted this roughly on top. You can also choose to just paint it the color you wanted first and then go in with the brown acrylic paint after and kind of dry brush it. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because, especially on the front, it's easier to use a brown acrylic paint first so that it goes into the lines and crevices of the pattern and then paint the blue paint on top. And that's basically it for the counter. Next I wanted to make a couple of shelves and for this I first sketched out the size I wanted the shelf itself and I then made a sketch for the border that goes on the edge so that items don't fall off the shelves. To make these I took some 0.8mm thick copper wire, used some pliers to bend the pieces to match up with my sketch and then soldered them together. If you want some more detail on the soldering process, you can check out my heart-shaped bundt cake tutorial. I'm going to link that in the info box. But basically, you just want to place the pieces on top of a heat or fireproof surface, apply any flux-based product of your choice, then add the solder, and then either use a soldering iron or a torch to melt the solder. In this case, I'm using a torch. The downside to using a torch is that when you heat up one area, at least the areas close to it is going to be heated up as well, and so the solder on those other parts might melt, and especially if you're making three-dimensional pieces, that is really bad because it's going to fall apart, but when making something that lays flat on the surface like this, it really doesn't matter. Once I was done, I bent in the sides. I also made some simple brackets, you're going to need two for each shelf. I used the same 0.8mm wire and then I used a 0.6mm thick copper sheet. And I then just glued the two inner pieces or the pieces of wire that are going to be closest to the wall when this shelf is hanging onto the shelf itself. And for the rest of the pieces of wire, I just stuck them down using a normal wood glue. Another way you can attach this is to leave a couple of the pieces of wire that are straight a bit longer and then drill holes in the shelf and stick them into those. Then just glue on the brackets and your basic shelf is done. Now you can paint it with whatever color and whichever type of paint you want. I chose to use this Wilgen metal coating and the cool thing about this paint is that it actually contains metal so that even if you're painting it on top of a surface that's not metal, you can use the patinas I've used in previous videos with it and it will react as if it was on metal. For this project though, I purely chose it for the color because I don't have any alcohol ink which I usually like using on metal in the color brass.
To make the blackboard, I chose to use a blackboard sticker for the wall. You can also use some blackboard paint or if you don't mind it being permanent and not erasable, you can use some normal black paper or cardstock. I then cut out a rectangle, cut off the corners to give it this fancy shape. And then stuck that down onto a piece of scrap wood. I then just simply use my scroll saw to cut that out and there's your basic blackboard. To match the counter I chose to paint the frame using the same brown acrylic paint. But I also really like how the bare wood looks on its own. And then for, I guess, the decorations, I first went in with a charcoal pencil and some white pastel and just made the blackboard look used and not completely clean. And then for the actual lettering and stuff, I just used a watercolor pencil. You can use a normal pastel pencil if you have one to draw on the blackboard or chalkboard. You can also use a normal piece of chalk or the thin chalk sticks you use for tracing patterns onto fabric. The reason why I chose to use a watercolor pencil is because it's a bit more permanent, it's not going to smudge, or at least it's only going to smudge a tiny bit due to the smooth surface. But you can still easily wipe off the design using some water. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I am planning on making some more accessories to go with this bakery theme because I want this to be a permanent scene that I can use when taking pictures of some of my miniature food. I'm not going to use the wallpaper I used in the background for this video. I do have plans for the wall as well. So I really hope you enjoyed and are up for some follow-up videos. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you have any food requests, and if you have any non-food requests, please leave them on my main channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.